Gun ownership has been intertwined with the identity of America since the settlement of the 13 colonies. The Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees Americans' right to keep and bear arms. But this simple phrase has led to decades of debate around gun control legislation and limitations on gun ownership, arguments that have gone all the way up to the Supreme Court. But to understand why the Second Amendment has provoked so much debate, we have to go back to the earliest days of the United States. At the time the Founding Fathers began drafting the Constitution, there were two major political groups, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. Federalists believed in a strong central government. The Anti-Federalists, fearing monarchy and tyranny, favored strong state governments. This debate also spread to the young country's military. Federalists believed a strong standing army was necessary to defend against foreign attacks and large-scale domestic unrest. Anti-Federalists believed those attacks could be prevented by states' militias, who could be called upon in a time of national crisis. They were weary of large military forces. Having experienced the oppression of the British Army both before and during the Revolution, this was a time when gun ownership and self-armament were already well established in the soon-to-be United States. Half of American colonists owned guns by 1775. More Americans had guns in their homes than had chairs or books. They had experienced British attempts to control through disarmament. But guns weren't just about protecting citizens from tyranny. Guns reinforced domain over property. And in the South, property meant slaves. Slave owners had a higher rate of gun ownership, and Southern militias focused less on protecting against the government's use of the military to oppress them, and more on keeping slaves from fleeing their masters or from outright rebellion. James Madison, a slave owner from Virginia, had all of these groups in mind, Federalists, Anti-Federalists, militias in the North and South, when he drafted the Second Amendment. The Constitution allowed for the raising of a federal army, but the Second Amendment was introduced as a compromise to make sure that this federal army was not going to be turned against the citizenry, striking a balance of power between the states and the federal government. At the time, the Second Amendment was not primarily seen as an individual's right to bear arms for their own protection, but rather as the writings of colonial thinkers like Noah Webster and Alexander Hamilton suggest, it was about enabling citizens to be part of a collective militia that would avert the use of the nation's military at home. Gun ownership evolved as the country expanded and differing interpretations of the Second Amendment have developed over time. The Supreme Court has heard many cases involving the Second Amendment, but never established gun ownership as a personal right outside of the context of some sort of military service. That is, until 2008, with the case of the District of Columbia v. Heller. Dick Heller was a D.C. cop who applied for permission to keep his sidearm at home. But because the city had enacted a handgun ban, his permit was denied. The court ruled in favor of Heller that the D.C. handgun ban was in violation of the Second Amendment. In his majority opinion, Justice Antonin Scalia wrote that the Second Amendment guaranteed an individual right to possess and carry weapons in case of confrontation. The court did acknowledge some limits, such as firearm possession by felons or in places such as schools or government buildings. This was considered a departure from legal precedent, which had largely derived people's right to bear arms in the context of a militia. The Heller decision was a huge moment in the gun rights debate as gun violence continues to plague the nation. Some believe that an armed citizenry is safer. Others believe more guns directly lead to more violence. However you see the issue, most can agree that debates surrounding the Second Amendment will continue to rage on.